not familiar with the Vincent Black Shadow. They referred me to the Los Angeles Bureau, which is actually in Beverly Hills, just a few long blocks from the Polo Lounge. But when I got there, the money woman refused to give me more than $300 in cash. She had no idea who I was, she said, and by that time I was pouring sweat. My blood is too thick for California. I've, I've never been able to properly explain myself in this climate, not with the soaking sweats, wild red eyeballs, and trembling hands. Then the essential decency of the white man's culture. Jesus, just one hour ago we were sitting over there in that stinking Bajino, stone broke and paralyzed for the weekend, when a call comes through from some total stranger in New York telling me to go to Las Vegas and expenses be damned, and then he sends me over to some office in Beverly Hills where another total stranger gives me $300 raw cash for no reason at all. I tell you, my man, this is the American dream in action. We'd be fools not to ride this strange torpedo all the way out to the end. Indeed, he said, we must do it. Right, I said, but first we need the car, and after that, the cocaine, and then the tape recorder for special music, and some Acapulco shirts. The only way to prepare for a trip like this, I felt, was to dress up like human peacocks and get crazy then screech across the desert and cover the story. Never lose sight of the primary responsibility. But what was the story? Nobody had bothered to say. So we would just have to draw up it on our own. Free enterprise. The American dream. Horatio Alger gone mad on drugs in Las Vegas. Do it now. Pure, gonzo journalism. There was also the socio-psychic socio factor. Every now and then, when your life gets complicated and the weasels start closing in, the only real cure is to load up on heinous chemicals and drive like a bastard from Hollywood to Las Vegas, to relax, as it were, in the womb of the desert sun. Just roll the roof back and screw it on. Grease the face with white tanning butter and move out with the music at a top volume, and at least a pint of ether. Uh, checking out the chat getting ready for another Thomas Hunt show just setting things up right here we also have the option for people to join us I put it out people can join my zoom chat put that in some of the uh, world crypto chats but uh, no one seems to be awake no one but the stock markets I was just giving you a little reading there from uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas of course this is the classic edition by a modern library it's the modern library edition of course the modern library edition completely different than other editions of fan lovely of course getting hold of the drugs had been no problem but the car and the tape recorder were not easy things to round up at 6 30 on a friday afternoon in hollywood i already had one car but it was far too small and slow for desert work we went to a Polynesian bar where my attorney made 17 calls before locating a convertible with adequate horsepower and proper coloring. Hang on to it, I heard him say into the phone. We'll be over to make the trade in 30 minutes. Then, after a pause, he began shouting, What? Of course the gentleman has a major credit card. Do you realize who the F you're talking to? Don't take any guff from these swine, I said as he slammed the phone down. Now we need a sound store with the finest equipment. Nothing dinky. We want one of those new Belgian Helio Watts with a voice-activated shotgun mic for picking up conversations in oncoming cars. We made several more calls and finally located our equipment in a store about five miles away. It was closed, but the salesman said he would wait if we hurried. But we were delayed en route when a stingray in front of us killed a pedestrian on Sunset Boulevard. The store was closed by the time we got there. There were people inside, but they refused to come to the double glass door until we gave it a few belts and made ourselves clear. Finally, two salesmen brandishing tire ironers came to the door, and we managed to negotiate the sale through a tiny slit. Then they opened the door just wide enough to shove the equipment out before slamming it and locking it again. 
Now take that stuff and get the hell away from here, one of them shouted through the slit. My attorney shook his fist at them. We'll be back, he yelled. One of these days I'll toss a fucking bomb into this place. I have your name on this sales slip. I'll find out where you live and burn your house down. That'll give him something to think about, he muttered as we drove off. That guy's a paranoid psychotic anyway. They're easy to spot. We had trouble again at the car rental agency. After signing all the papers, I got into the car and almost lost control of it while backing across the lot to the gas pump. The rental man was obviously shaken. Say there, uh, you fellows are going to be careful with this car, aren't you? Of course. Well, good God, he said. You just backed over that two-foot concrete abutment, and you didn't even slow down. Forty-five in reverse, and you barely missed the pump. No harm done, I said. I always test a transmission that way, the rear end, for stress factors. Meanwhile, my attorney was busy transferring rum and ice from the Pinto to the back seat of the convertible. The rental man watched him nervously. Say, he said, are you fellas drinking? Not me, I said. Just fill the goddamn tank, my attorney snapped. We're in a hell of a hurry. We're on our way to Las Vegas for a desert race. What? Never mind, I said. We're responsible people. I watched him put the gas cap on, then I jammed the thing into low gear and we lurched into traffic. There's another worrier, said my attorney. He's probably all cranked up on speed. Yeah, you should have given him some reds. Reds wouldn't help a pig like that, he said. To hell with him. We have a lot of business to take care of before we can get on the road. I'd like to get a hold of some priest robes, I said. They might come in handy in Las Vegas. But there were no costume stores open, and we weren't up to burglarizing a church. Why bother, said my attorney. And you have to remember that a lot of cops are good, vicious Catholics. Can you imagine what those bastards would do if we got busted all drugged up and drunk in stolen vestments? Jesus, they'd castrate us. You're right, I said. And for Christ's sake, don't smoke that pipe at stoplights. Keep in mind that we're exposed. He nodded. We need a big hookah. Keep it down here on the seat, out of sight. If anybody sees us, they'll think we're using oxygen. We spent the rest of that night rounding up materials and packing the car. Then we ate some mescaline and went swimming in the ocean. Somewhere around dawn, we had breakfast in a Malibu coffee shop, then drove very carefully across town and plunged into the smog-shrouded Pasadena freeway, heading east. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you guys come in. Welcome to the Thomas Hunt Show. Uh, Today is Monday, March 9th, 2020, a day that will live in infamy, the collapse of the stock market due to the coronavirus. And Bitcoin went down. (laughs) Checking out the price of Bitcoin. It's not quite even showing up here. It must be showing kind of a half day. Thought we were down a full 10%. Let's see what we can do here. Reloading the charts, which doesn't really make it work. Good job, uh, Bitcoin average with your code. Just keep working on it, guys. Undefined call. Checking out the price of Bitcoin in the last 24 hours. We're down 4.68% with a last of 7,681. A high of 8,440 and a low of 7,000. 669. That's one dollar for 12,989 Satoshis looking like it's on its way towards the 15,000 Satoshi barrier when just days ago we were at a nice 10,000 barrier. Checking out the Dow Jones Industrial Average, getting a nice refresh in there. Currently 24,000. 563. The Dow is down five whole percent. 1,301 points. At one point, the Dow was down to about 23,979, breaking through the 24,000 Dow Jones point barrier. Oil crashes by most since 1991 as Saudi Arabia launches price war. Hey, there's Josh from Voltaire. Oh, we're echoing. Hold on. My, oh, is it echoing? Let's try one more time. Now you can't hear me, but it's not echoing. 
<laughs> so let me think about this. Okay, so we put the microphone into there, and then the audio comes out of there. Let's see, speaker. Maybe I just put the output there. No, then I won't be able to hear you. Oh, I don't know how Richard Hart does this. He must have a smart plan. Try to talk one more time, Josh. Uh, Josh can't hear me anymore. Oh, well, we'll figure this out. We'll think of some plan. All right. I can I can hear you, but am I still echoing? No. All right. All right. I think we got it. Let's um, Let me bring on the Josh screen. Boom. There you are. You're on TV. <laughs> Man, what a crazy day. This is a historic day, folks. I'm uh, watching this all live here. Our markets are going insane. People are moving into gold, the cryptos. You know, nothing's safe. This is the thing. A lot of people are like crypto is the new gold, crypto is the new gold. It isn't just yet. You know, it still needs a little while to gain the confidence that gold has had for 3,000 years. Saying that, gold is also not the most stable thing. Why? Because who the hell runs the GLD, and that's HSBC, which is mainly in Asia. Asian markets, of course, are also crashing like crazy. No one trusts their gold with, with, with HSBC. It's, it's a really insane. Meanwhile, government bond yields are crashing to 50, like just insane lows. Uh, but, but that's the only place people can pile into. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, they were talking about on all the news, they were talking about negative interest uh, being possible in the United States. And they were uh, kind of freaking out about it, really. Yeah, I mean, where, where, did, where else do you go? That's the thing that that's, you know, a lot of people think the Fed uh, and all these people are so sophisticated with their magic money hands. But really, at the end of the day, they have one lever, one lever, and that's to make price of money more expensive by putting interest rates up to lend or cheaper. But they've been so cheap already, they're getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper that the only place to go is to crank it the opposite, past zero to the minuses which is uh, it's funny because they talk about Bitcoin being such an experiment, but really this is the crazy experiment we've ever seen is negative interest rates. And, you know, we, we talked about it on the, sh on the uh, Bitcoin group the other day that banks, because of the negative interest rates, banks don't want to put their money at the Fed because then they have to pay interest. So they start putting hordes of cash, physical cash into private vaulting facilities like the ones uh, we at Voltoro use. And, um, it's, it's just a, it's it's just a mess, dude. This is so amazing what's happening right now. I'm I'm uh, I'm at a gasp. But the thing is, all of us Bitcoiners and gold bugs, we've been expecting this sort of thing for a while. Uh, we didn't realize that it would take a uh, a crowned virus to, uh, to to cause the collapse. Yes, I was I was waiting in a cash, waiting for the bear market to end. Yeah. I think, Josh, maybe you need headphones or something. That might be a good try. I can hear just a All little right, bit yes. of my after echo. But I think otherwise, we're technically uh, real strong. We got the chat up on the screen. We're looking at the Dow Jones price. Uh, let's move that up just a little bit above the chat. Looks like we're down 5.13%, uh, dipped just a little bit more. They did institute the circuit block or the circuit breakers. Uh, it was very exciting earlier. Everyone was kind of freaking out on TV. It went down 7% immediately at the start. Just started off down 7%. Then we saw it recover to where it is right now, about 5% down. And uh, now we're going to see what's happening. I think that a lot of people thought that the uh, algorithmic tradings were catching some deals and that they were the ones thinking this was a good buy at 7% uh, down. Then now at 5% down, those same algorithmic bots may be saying, hey, 2% traffic, that's a 2% profit. That's all right. I might take that. <laughs> so uh, we are definitely at the mercy of the bots. The bots are driving this thing. Uh, checking it out. Troll Blocks is live on TV. Uh, Jeremy wants to know why Bitcoin doesn't have circuit breakers. Doesn't seem fair. Uh, a lot of people are saying, Oh, why don't they move uh, the price uh, when it goes up? If it goes up too fast, isn't that just as big a problem? Uh, so, <laughs> but that's a lot yeah. of uh, Bitcoin or trolling and such that's going on there, right? So, yeah, I just tweeted that it's getting t retweeted like crazy. Ah. Antonopoulos just retweeted me on that one. 
I said, does, if, if, if the market goes up 7%, does it also get halted? No, of course not. I know, because that's a good thing. It's a bad thing. Got to have both here. Let's see. <laughs> Grab the zoom. Well, you know, it's a, if, if a market's truly free, um, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's one of the things question. that was exposed this morning when they were talking about it is normally they talk all the time about the, the a powerful market and how it's all free and all these kind of things. Uh, but today they were talking, no, that this is a system and that, you know, there are rules. And, and when it went down 7% and instead of just, you know, taking their losses or whatever you do in an all powerful market, right? Um, no, yeah. they, they said, freeze it. You know, this, our system's not working. And uh, that seems a little different than uh, what they usually say on, you know, these kind of days. So There are rules, Donnie. There are rules. This, this is isn't NAM. This is bowling. So, no. Yeah. It's very wild to watch it today on the, uh, on the big screen there and just watching. On the jumbotron. It. Yeah, people were, people were going crazy, man. They were just uh, losing. Yeah, their minds. so. So what 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 do people feel like? How how far will this go? What will happen? This is uh, you know we're feeling the pulse really of of people's of people's uh, energy into where where do you go when when everything's burning? Where do you run to? Especially in a panic, it's 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 very very interesting. And actually, the saddest part of this whole thing, if I can say, it, Thomas, is the the saddest part is that a lot of people have been putting their money, and not only putting their money, but forced to put their money into pension funds for many, many years. And these pension funds basically slush vast amounts of cash around the markets. And uh, the, these things are evaporating by the second. Uh, my my uh, wife's father, he told me only last week, oh, my uh, my superannuation fund, that's what you call it in Australia, my superannuation fund is, has lost so and so much and, and you know, he, he, and he has to live on that for the rest of his life. And there's many, many people in this boat and, uh, and it's, it's really, really unfortunate. I'm, I'm really, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a scary time for people that can't, I don't have the energy to re-earn savings, you know. Well, uh, there it is. I mean, we all we all got addicted to to heroin, right? We had these profits that came out of nowhere, and if you just saved your money and you retired in thirty years and you bought the right mutual funds and you had the right things, you'd be fine. And uh, where that money came from, how it happened, you you didn't really care. It didn't really matter to you. And we ran around the world and we invested in the most aggressive things we could invest in. And we took over the countries we could. And we pushed on the economies we could. And we, when they, when they talked about all those things and they're like, they're moving the sweatshop from, you know, China to Thailand. They're moving it from Thailand to Indonesia. And everyone in America, all the kind of gung-ho people that don't care, they don't think things are connected. They're like, yeah, you know, who cares? You know, the next one down, like get some t cheaper T-shirts. And everyone's like, we're going to get the cheapest T-shirts we're going to have the most cheapest T-shirts in the world. It doesn't matter what happens. Even recently, we're having the whole uh, Medicare for all debate in this country. And mm. now suddenly they're, they're like, what can the president do as a response to this crisis? And they're like, well, he could give everyone sick leave because having sick yeah. leave would make it so you could stay home when you're sick so you don't spread a disease like a civilized country. Uh, but we don't live in a civilized country here. We don't have sick leave. Uh, they were also talking about uh, and all these other things that would help people who already have jobs. Uh, they're saying nothing that's going to help independent contractors or business owners or people who you know don't necessarily have a plan for this, who are going to take it hard in the shorts. Uh, they were even mentioning basic income. They they poo pooed it on CNBC, of course. But Andrew Yang, presidential candidate, basic income. Maybe we should give the people some money. And uh, a yep. lot of their plans. I mean, giving the people money right now uh, would be great. Uh, as, as horrible as it is, give everyone $1,000 at Costco, uh, which, again, to see these stocks, I don't know. Everything, everything seems to happen in slow motion, right? The, the stocks yesterday, they're, they're like, Costco is up. Cruises are down. And, and in the future, they're like, they're like, casino stocks are down. Entertainment stocks are down. Like, all these incredibly predictable things are now completely getting wrecked. And, I mean, I guess I didn't, I didn't short them, so I'm... I'm as dumb as everyone else, but Josh, what can we do? Everything, everything's happening predictably. We're, we're, we've gone through last week where it went down, like it went down, it went up, it went down, it went up, it went down, down, up, up, something like that. 
Everyone's generally freaked, but today, Bloody Monday, everyone knew beforehand, which again, didn't help me at all. I was watching it. I was watching it live with everyone else watching it crash, not really profiting either way. Um, but, mm. but what are we going to do? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm this, uh, like, you know, I said on the, well, uh, on the, on the Bitcoin group that, uh, that Bitcoin will go down. And um, yeah, I, I also, don't, I'm not a big fan of shorting. I don't short things. I, I, I don't generally trade. I just, uh, I just hold through. I buy some gold every so often and uh, I sell some gold every so often for crypto. But that, they're the two asset classes I mainly use, of course, because I, <laughs> I'm a Tory guy. But, but uh, it's, it's, it's hard, man. You know, unless you're actively wanting to trade this stuff. But generally, people are just living their lives. They want to, they want to live their lives. They, they, they want to invest in something that's solid and they invest in it. But the problem is, that I see that, you know, the, the, the stock markets weren't designed for uh, all these forced funds, these, these, this massive amount of retirement funds to be slushing about. They were designed for people to speculate some money on a business and invest in a business and think, yep, I, I believe in this business. I'm going to buy it and, uh, and hopefully I'll get a return. Instead, you've got these vast amounts of billions and billions of dollars slushing around of of uh, of um, retirement funds now they're not invested these are speculated these funds the difference being that an investor will look at the fundamentals of a business and decide whether that's a good business uh, and 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 speculators will just look at charts like tone base you know they, they just look at charts they don't care what it is or what they're doing they just want to speculate uh, on these and they see shapes and they short and they long and they and th the problem is that We've for years now had uh, CEOs of companies uh, who take a long time study to become a CEO, to, to, to get to, to become good at this job. They get into a job and they are now what happens? They do not make long term solid decisions for their businesses. They make short term wins always because they watch as a speculator says, oh, short term gain. A CEO isn't going to get on CNBC and say, Oh, I'm going to put uh, you know uh, three years of profit aside to build new infrastructure so it could be profitable in the long term. No, no, no. They they say, oh, we're going to just do quick quick wins uh, because if they do that, they'll get fired. They'll never get a job again because they were the ones that put away three years of profit to uh, do long term structural stuff. So the, these sorts of uh, forced things that the government does. The government says you have to invest in the stock market by through your through your retirement fund. You have to do that, which distorts the market in strange ways, unseen ways that people don't know about. And this is why it's so important that uh, that we 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 stop with with this ridiculous forcing people um, to to do things with their money that they shouldn't have to. Uh, and and educate. Johnson. I mean, continue educating how important it is to save for your retirement. You also don't want a massive populace of people that haven't saved any money for their retirement. But right now, they are just uh, they, they, all these retirees are absolutely sweating. They they give them the money and they don't say. There's no one that says, "Hey, you should take ten percent out," or "Hey, you should take some profits every once in a while." It's more like buy a mutual fund and you'll be safe buy a combination of mutual funds that are made up of other funds and you'll be safe, uh, expose injury, you know, long-term you'll be fine. Even today they're talking about how, like if you're long-term, you're going to be fine. You're just going to ride this out. It doesn't matter, all these things. And um, one of the things they said today, I was watching CNBC and they said that on the treasury market, it used to be that uh, the market could not move the real world. If the market got all excited about something, the real world, well, we still got to, you know, farm the soybeans. We've got to get the milk to market. This is the real world. We can't just make more milk because the market's fired up about milk this year. However, no. now he said that they've built four times the amount of value in a structure on top of these treasuries, that there's so many. And he really said, I couldn't believe I. I don't, know, I don't watch financial news very much, but apparently they do say the same things that we say. And the guy said, practically out of my mouth, he said, we've built derivatives on top of derivatives on top of derivatives. And I, I barely know what that means, but this is the TV guy saying it. And what he's saying is that they built four <laughs> times the value on top of treasury bonds that are actually in treasury bonds. So because of this misstated pyramid, he even used the word pyramid, um, this upside down pyramid, that now the value controls the bonds 
the the fake value, the projected value, the derivative value, the yeah. futures, the past, yeah. the longs, the shorts, all of whatever it is, that thing right. is moving the other thing. So in yeah, this the, panic, the dog wagging the tail. Yeah, and now we're in a full blown panic where everyone's like, okay, the how bad's the virus? Like I used to, and I used to have this about government. I was like, oh well, you know, it's not so bad. I can put it in the back of my mind. They're not really bothering me, right? They're they're going around the world wrecking things for other people, but my general plan to write history books and stay out of trouble, not really being bothered. Then they started. Yeah, I got corrected there. Yeah, yeah. They then they started the crashing dogs. planes into buildings and buildings falling down for no reason and all these kind of things. And I was like, oh, we need to pay more attention to these guys. They're up to all kinds yeah. of things. And now in the same way, everyone's like, oh, just leave your, leave your stock market money there. Let them invest it. It'll all be fine. And then they invest yeah. it in these derivatives on top of those derivatives on top. And these are the responsible people. These are the adults with all the jargon and all the protection and all the, you know, degrees and the, you know, experienced Wall Street trader. And I mean, you know, again, let's let's check the price of Bitcoin next week. We got it right here, the magic eight ball. Here we go. The price of Bitcoin will be higher. Yes or no? It is certain. Wow. No. The ball. All right. The ball is going out with the Bitcoin as a safe haven uh, theory there. So ball yeah, is sticking well, with it. Let's so. see. Let's see. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, Petruja, I hope I said that right, said smash the likes. And I totally agree with that. It helps this video get out to all the people out there. Um, and uh, yeah, drill drill that thing. That's right. Get amongst we have, it. We have about it, 60, it doesn't, it doesn't 60 cost you live anything, viewers. Please. 60 live viewers on YouTube. Uh, it would be great to see if we had 60 likes. Uh, let me see. I have I have a zillion windows open. But maybe if I get one more window open, I'll share a, a live picture of the like count. Uh, but as you guys can see, we're adapting to Open Broadcaster Studio. Uh, I'm broadcasting from within Open Broadcaster Studio. Joss is joining us on Zoom. The chat is joining us on YouTube. And if you call now, you could join us on the phone line or you could join us on Skype at World Crypto Network or at one five one eight six hundred nineteen forty nine. And uh, then we would be utilizing all of our various options, truly uh, maximizing uh, our possibilities here. So yeah. uh, uh, we've also got a uh, quote from TV that started this show is uh, unwrapping the onion. And that's kind of what Josh is saying, that they've built this big financial world with all these things. And uh, for a while, it was really great. And we were all going to profit. And we could just put our money uh, into our... Uh, into our short-term gains and so forth and just our retirement plans would grow forever. But now it's like, no, you can't. The, uh, the thing that they built, and it's the same, it's kind of a mirror or a, a similar to the 2008 crisis with the uh, financial uh, mortgages. They said, hey, everyone, everyone can have a house. Everyone can borrow tons of money and have a house. And then it turns out, no, not, not everyone can have a house. Not everyone can borrow tons of money. Uh, open broadcaster, you're so... We're taking some big risks using Open Broadcaster Live. I'm just going to not touch it for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Oh, OBS is, is wigging out. Yeah, it's tough to say, Josh. I mean, we're probably still on. Um, let's see. Do you miss to remove? Okay, so I did a display capture instead of a window capture. So if I do a window capture, uh, that should get us in better position. Let's see. The window we want to capture... There's a lot going on here. Let's see. There's a lot going. Oh, there we go. We're back. Yeah, we're back. I think the audio is probably there the whole time. But, uh, Josh, what do you think? What's going on in the chat? They say uh, Red Canoe has canceled his trip to Palm Springs because of COVID. Uh, that's definitely starting to happen. We had uh, uh, even mm. right here, uh, uh, Ben uh, from Wales um, had uh, taken his family and moved to Scotland or something. So um, people yeah. are starting to take uh, – actions to protect themselves from coronavirus and from other things. Uh, Josh, have you taken any actions? What do you think is an appropriate thing for things people to do? Yeah, look, I, I started taking action actually about a month and a half ago, nearly two months ago, um, around about the beginning of January. And people were laughing at me, uh, including my family. You know, they started saying, oh, you're just a, a conspiracy theorist and you're too, too on edge and stop panicking. They would say to me, and I said, I'm not panicking. Like, I, this is, there is something about this coronavirus. This strain is, is, is wacky, uh, this novel coronavirus. And, and uh, 
it's it's the fact that it's undetectable for 14 days is what's scaring me. So it, uh, I just started accumulating some food um, slowly and uh, some storable rice. I went to, I even ducked in to the Asian supermarket, which was uh, which was very empty at the time. If this was an Asian disease, just like HIV was a was a gay disease in the beginning. Um, you know, so no one was going into the supermarkets. I, of course, picked up those nice big sacks of rice uh, for my family who were laughing at me, uh, my extended family. I thought, well, you won't be laughing soon. I'll pick some up for you guys anyway for that, for that time. And, uh, of course, they aren't laughing now as they're seeing that Italy is, um, is under lockdown. It's, uh, it is definitely getting, getting a little bit scarier. And, I, you know, it's important got people not to panic it really is but how do you not panic is by being prepared by slowly going out there getting just a little bit extra food here and there don't don't go crazy in one big shop and and start smacking people over the head with vast amounts of toilet paper uh just uh you know get get a little bit extra each time you go shopping and put it aside and uh and and make sure it's a sort of long-lasting storable stuff pumpernickel is a good one uh, if you're German, uh, if you've got a German supermarket, because uh, that's a bread that lasts for a long time. It's also very good for you. Uh, they're saying in, they're saying in the chat that THC prevents the COVID virus. What do you think about that, Josh? <laughs> probably not, uh, especially if you're sharing a J. It's probably not the best thing. It's, a, it's definitely an end to culture. A certain kind of uh, human culture was about uh, kissing on the greetings, shaking hands on the greetings, uh, passing around a cigarette to share it. These kind of things are yeah. pretty much out today. I'm seeing a lot of like people want to do this namaste because uh, it, it's very good. It's, it's respectful. It's uh, all on me. And that you can see it yeah. coming too, because I always found the the problem for me. Everyone's like, "Hey, how's it going?" And you're you're just hand like woo, like the the shake. Like yeah. I can't, you know. I tried to switch to fist bumps even because people were just cranking on my hands. But um, yeah, what do you think, Josh? <laughs> you're gonna namaste or, or fist yeah, bump? I'm, I'm or... into the elbow bump. That's oh, the elbow. Cool. That's it. That's elbow a good bump. One. Yeah. <laughs> we're becoming yeah. we're becoming ridiculous humans. It's happened so quickly. I know. I, I actually wonder about that. I wondered how long it took after the Spanish flu for people to start kissing each other on the cheek again. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't, from everything that I've heard from old timers, is that Spanish flu came extremely fast, just like COVID 19, and left pretty quickly too. By the next year, everyone had sort of forgotten, even though it killed more people than World War One. Well, the interesting thing about the Spanish flu is they're saying uh, at the time they were more mobilized. Uh, to fight the war and to go that direction uh, than they were to, to work on the Spanish flu. So it was kind of the forgotten killer. And it went out and killed tons and tons of people, and, and no one did anything about it. And uh, it's different this time. We have so much knowledge, so much information. Uh, like you're saying, I also saw this one coming. I remember the very first uh, uh, beginnings of the mask fear and uh, what people were doing there and getting into that. But... Uh, no, I didn't do anything. I didn't. I mean, I have the the lightest of preparations from Costco. I have a little bit of uh, here and there, uh, food and water. I don't know how long it's going to last, but the, I don't know the very even just the idea of the prepping uh, is overwhelming. It's it's too much. I mean, I was standing there yeah. at Costco, and it was a few days ago, so it was before things really heated up. But still, things were in people's minds, and uh, it was spinning around. I was like, I can't. I can't take all of this home. Like, what do I need? I'm going to buy all this rice. What do I, I don't know. And so you get a bag of rice and you get a bottle of whiskey and you get, you know, a week's worth of instant soup. And, uh, I don't know that that's going to help at all. Uh, but that's what you have. And, uh, I don't know. Other people are freaking out now. There's uh, every day on the Twitter, uh, vital Vegas keeps showing pictures of the Vegas Costco's with the giant lines and people are starting to show up in full bunny suits with the, uh, plastic and the big rebreathers and everything just kind of desperate to, stay clean and stay away from this thing. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what uh, the best about. is the best is when people rock up in those T-Rex costumes, you know, because uh, they're sort of keeping you, keeping you isolated in a modern sort of way. That'd be fun. If I had the dinosaur suit and you're just like, go out in the dinosaur suit and go sh shopping at Costco. Just like woo, woo, yeah. woo, shopping during the COVID virus. I don't have anything else. The dinosaur suit keeps me clean. 
or uh, people with those novelty condom uh, outfits from Halloween. And they're like, yeah, let's get some novelty <laughs> condoms. That's a good idea. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, uh, people of the chat, what do you think? Uh, where would you put your money if you had it in the stock exchange right now? Where are you going to put it? Uh, in, uh, are you going to stay in crypto? Are you moving in or out? What, what's, what's your deal? I'd love to know uh, what you guys are thinking. I guess you can't buy the dip. If everything's already all in crypto. I definitely have been thinking about, and I think there's still room for them to go down, unfortunately, but entertainment type stocks, things like Disney uh, might be on sale. I think Amazon, Apple, uh, these kind of value well, stocks, picking up these for the long term. Uh, but then again, I, I don't think that we're done with this uh, virus thing. Even just uh, before all this uh, stock market thing opened, the story on my Twitter that I wanted to talk about is that they're delaying the 5G iPhone, and that it's finally getting there. That people are starting to realize that, okay, you know, the, the Chinese people make the chips, they make the phones, they're sick, they're staying home, they can't make the chips, they can't make the phones. doesn't matter if Apple can design them or whatever. We don't have the chips, we don't mm. have the numbers. Like, it's start and the, the entire global, all the structure, like, I mean, to me, you know, all that used to matter was, like, the next Star Wars movie, the next Harry Potter movie, the, the entertainment yeah. structure, right? But if you look at the iPhone, yeah. and it's more important than just a computer device or a geek device or whatever, this is the structure that the world builds upon. We need the 2007 yeah. Corollas because we're, the 2006s are old. You know, we need the new cars. We need the new phones, the new TVs, the new computers. Well, if they can't make the new cars, the new computers, the new TVs, the new the earnings go down, the, the value of the companies go down, the projections, because everything's on projections now. Uh, so, yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's bad and getting worse, and it's, it's one of those everyone needs to know about it. Like we used to say this when Bitcoin would crash. Chris Ellis was big into this. He would say, uh, you, you have to wait, Tom. The, the entire world has got to hear about this. It takes 24 hours for the news to come all the way around and everyone to make their decision if they're going to hell, hold or they're going to sell. And so you have to wait. So uh, we're waiting right now. Um, but like everyone's known, I mean, Bitcoin was crashing this weekend. We lost the other. I was saying we're down 10% because it's been the last couple of days, but we lost the other 6% yesterday. You know, we lost it before because our market doesn't close randomly because uh, it's a weak end uh, and it doesn't close randomly because they had a circuit breaker. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, they pretend it's an electrical term. They're like, it's a circuit breaker. The market was overloaded and now we, we've pulled a circuit <laughs> and we're going to, uh, and the other thing they said is they said for cooler heads, they didn't have a technical term or a reason or any, and especially like they're saying on Twitter with much of the trading being algorithmic. Now you're really just have the computer sitting there, you know, ticking down a clock of 15 minutes into, you know, milliseconds and nanoseconds and whatever else you want. And, uh, yeah. and then, then we restarted the market <laughs> and we pulled the circuit breaker again. So, yeah, you've got light speeds happening here we, we we have a lot of people answering i mean a few people answering here uh so mining stocks uh from ong uh utilities interesting somebody is thinking ahead and buying blood interesting oh <laughs> uh, you can't you can't Market. sell the dog solar van life you got to keep the dog you got to buy more dog yeah. food now you got to get your investment ready uh, just in case you need more dog food I know we were talking to uh, Dan yesterday from uh, Grand Rapids, and he said his cat needed special kind of food, and he'd stocked up on that food. Uh, so that's the best kind of prepping, things where there's something you know that's kind of rare that you like that you might need more of, and you might have to spend a few weeks or a month inside, uh, get more of that cat food, get more of that dog food. Oh, he says his dog farts too much. All right. Well, yeah. maybe that could also be a food issue <laughs> or exercise. A lot of these things are exercise. I know my neighbor's dog barks all the time. And uh, we went over there one time and I uh, talked to them about it. And we said, hey, you know, maybe if you walked your dog, I wouldn't bark every time you put him outside. And she's like, walk the dog? Exercise? Good for dogs? What? Like what? Oh, that. my God. It was a, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, yeah. One of those honey boo boo type situations where you just got to let it go. But so uh, yeah, home financing also an interesting thing. What will happen? I I, I see the uh, that people will default a lot 
in Hong Kong because Hong Kong is mostly variable interest rates. Um, interest rates in Hong Kong uh, are, you know, first of all, we're going to have a lot of defaults in businesses. First of all, we had the, uh, of course, the entire city of Hong Kong going down because of, uh, you know, pro-democracy uh, rallies and, and, and such. And now uh, hit by Corona, most businesses can last around about three months at, at most. Um, and so we're going to see a lot of job, job losses. And um, you, would, you, know, you wouldn't believe that, see- Josh, you wouldn't believe the socialist nonsense they were spouting on CNBC this morning. They were saying that most Americans don't have more than a single month of savings and that we might have to delay their mortgage payments, delay their credit payments. We might have to help these people who are going to have trouble here, the kind of people who can't take two weeks off to be quarantined, who can't get sick for a month. Uh, to get through this thing. Uh, what do you think? About oh, so that? instead of bailing out the banks, you actually bail out people. That sounds slightly sensible rather than the banks. I'd much rather that. Uh, I mean, I took all my signs down, but Andrew Yang for president, man, Andrew Yang, come back. <laughs> already jumped. He already jumped the ship. ship. I mean, I, I think, it, I think it would be much smarter to, to take a responsible uh, approach to your own finances and save when you can, save for your family as well. When you think, okay, I've got enough for me and my wife or me, I should think about my extended family, what happens if, so you can look after each other. This is um, this is really, really important part of, of society that's sort of missing. And and the problem with bailouts, and you know, as much as I, I, I like the idea, there's also problems with it because people then just don't, think they think well if, if if the banks fail it doesn't matter i'll get bailed out and, and so really it does come down to all of us be teaching or learning again how to save how to properly hamster away some some nuts um oh no squirrel sorry <laughs> <laughs> squirrel away some nuts for the winter and uh, and w- w- we'll see this now as people start burning their hands um on 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 terrible financial advice that's been given, and and this 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 ideology of constant de-risking is also really really hard. Uh, this constant de-risking de-risking that people uh, have to have go through by the government of 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 everything. Uh, you don't even know what risk looks like anymore, and uh, that's also a bad part of the society that we live in. We do need to understand what risk is. We do need to feel risk. We need to be hurt by risk because one day things like today happen when uh, when people don't understand any risk at all. I mean, folks, the stock market was going up in January day after day on new highs, on new highs. Everyone was high, even though planes were grounded, even though Hyundai had said, we've stopped uh, making cars because we can't get parts from china then toyota then bmw stopped with their blinkers well no one uses blinkers that drive dm bmws anyways so it didn't really matter but <laughs> um uh, it's it, it, you know there is um there is really a a large uh sort of disassociation of reality uh, when when they're all feeling high, and I, and I guess we in the crypto world felt this in 2017 as well. We were like, "Wow, I can never! If we we've hit a new paradigm. You know, nothing could go wrong." I know that the entire world's factory is burning in China, and Hyundai has stopped, but the stock market's just going to keep on going up and up. Yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's ob- it was obviously uh, going to collapse, and you know, okay. if, if people were actually trading this, they should have shorted. Well, and as as someone who's been in cash for a while here, it hasn't been fun. The rest of the market's been going up. Lots of people have been making lots of gains, and I've been sitting here waiting for it to rain. Well, now it's raining, and it's not very fun either. And you still have that thing that happens where, uh, you know, you've been pretty adventurous sitting in cash for a while now, you know, being staying out of this craziness. Uh, but at the same time, now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I was I was seventy thirty in cash. I wish I was 100% in cash. Oh, if only I was 80, 20 or 90, 10 or whatever. I mean, you can't, it, it instantly happens, these uh, double guessing. So, yeah. So, Rad Vladdy uh, wrote that the house is paid off, 
but I may refinance the home if interest rates go even lower to buy Bitcoin with cash. Now, this is an interesting move. This is an interesting move because <laughs> I've, I've thought about this a lot, and this is more for smaller countries with smaller, um, uh, smaller economies. It could be really an, an, a, a kind of a, an attack vector when people start taking loans to buy Bitcoin and then just defaulting on the loans because it doesn't matter. They've got, they've got Bitcoin. It's going up in value. They don't need to take, uh, you know, they don't need credit lines anymore because they've got plenty of cash and the government can't confiscate the Bitcoin. There's kind of an attack vector on the entire economy if everyone did that. And it's a very interesting move. Um, uh, I think independent, uh, in, independently of what I just said, uh, I, think it's an, I think it's an interesting move, especially if Bitcoin starts hitting low, low lows. I mean, there are only 21 million and, and actually way less than that. I agree with that. They're saying in the chat, you should uh, short airline stocks, go long on generators and bleach. And uh, Zazaza says, we can say I told you so, but it's not always fun to be right. And uh, it's also not fun to be right on this uh, Bitcoin thing going down either. Everyone was saying it's a safe haven. Maybe people right now, they're risking off of stocks. Maybe they would risk on into Bitcoin, uh, but we're not seeing that. Right now, Josh, if you were your average investor and you're like, okay, I'm I'm getting out of Apple stocks. I'm getting out of tech stocks. I'm done with the market. Would you be in a hurry to just say, put that money in Bitcoin? No way. There's no possible way I would. Uh, you, you don't put something in a risky market, from a risky market to a risky market. You put it into a safe haven. And a safe haven is safe haven because it's been for years uh, that. Now, Gold is also not cruising up. I mean, it's at a, it is at, at seven-year highs, but it's it's not like blah, exploding to the upwards right now. It's kind of a little ticks down, a little ticks up. It's it's um, it's kind of weird. But I think where we will see movement in Bitcoin because it isn't a safe haven from crisis, but what it is a safe haven from is money printing. And uh, what the Fed will try to do is print the hell out of this uh, supply chain uh, uh, nightmare that we're getting uh, in, in companies. And the thing is the Fed can do a lot with money printing for the short term, but they cannot print themselves out of supply chain issues. And, um, and so what, what will happen is we'll start seeing a lot harder inflation uh, coming through, uh, give it maybe uh, you know, six months to a year, the, the, you know, the thing with inflation is the people that first get their money, uh, their hands on new money also, uh, you know, have the full value of that money. And, and it takes a while to go through the market and, uh, and become worth less and less. Of course, if you do get your hands on new money, put that into gold, put that into something else, because, uh, yeah, that new money dilutes everyone else's money. And we in crypto understand this. We in crypto understand when there's an ICO with billions of coins, uh, why they they burn start burning these coins because they supposedly get get more valuable. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter how much. It, it, there's also a part of economic theory that if I go and dig a hole that no one cares about, it's not going to have value just because I put work into that hole. So there's uh, there's lots of things here going on. I'm kind of randy because such, such a keep, crazy uh, day. They keep they keep selling that ripple. They just keep selling that ripple, and they recently even said that. The reason Ripple has value is because we have so much of it to sell and that we keep selling it. And so they just keep selling it and printing it and selling it. And then they had a whole bunch and they all, all printed already and they just keep selling it. Yeah. 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 Short sale airline stocks and, uh, and bleach. I mean, I think another a good, uh, a good thing to buy in these times is, is really uh, is, is property good solid land uh, forestry stuff like that uh, th these tend to you know i'm not talking about like mcmansions uh, i'm talking about as these property prices go down you can start uh, taking loans out to buy property because these loans become especially if they're variable rates right now they'll become cheaper and cheaper well that was an interesting shift that i saw recently on crypto twitter uh, i don't know if you guys know jeremy gardner uh, he invested yeah. in, uh, he did Augur for a while. He worked at Brock's company, uh, Blockchain Capital, uh, whatever it's called now. And, uh, you know, big player in the space and all that. And 
for a while, Jeremy had been on kind of the party stream, and he, he uh, one of the things he did with his money, presumably, is he went and rented a beach house in Miami Beach, and he was, you know, being the big baller and all that. And uh, all of a sudden, with this whole virus thing, uh, Jeremy was posting on Twitter, hey, anybody want to buy a big farmhouse together? <laughs> and he was saying exactly what you're saying, Josh, that he was starting to invest in that reality that maybe if you had a farm, a farm that produced uh, the goods that you eat, especially with all these uh, steak eaters running around, if you had a farm that actually had cows uh, and you actually ate the cows, then you could create uh, kind of one of those cycles where you could actually be a libertarian. Uh, I think it's very, yeah. very difficult to be this kind of true libertarian. And one of the reasons I don't recommend it and I don't really believe in it. And, you know, when you read the Ayn Rand book and John Galt's out there making everything for himself, it's great. But who's sweeping up John Galt's factory? You know, just just like in the world of Rick and Morty, they have that world where it's all Ricks. And if the world was all geniuses, all Ricks, well, one of those genius Ricks has to sweep the factory. And he's just as genius as every other Rick, but still it has to get done. And uh, that's what these things don't take into mind, that these things have to get done. There's an interconnectivity to everything. And that this is when we see the effect. We see this big, you know, like I can be private by myself, like the Soviet Union or whatever, I'll be caged off from the rest of the world. But when it's time for me to, you know, have a virus, suddenly I need the rest of the world. Suddenly I need nurses and I need scientists and I need even drug companies or whatever. Uh, so that everything is interconnected. You can never get away from that. You can have these little experiments in a vacuum where you can say, oh, you know, it worked in this such and such a vacuum. It worked in this vacuum. But that interconnection is, is always going to knock it over or, or support it or not support it. So, Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, uh, of voluntary interaction. I'm a, I would consider myself a voluntarist. I, I think uh, if you want to live in a society where we, you all pull together money uh, to help the unfortunate few, I think that's a fantastic thing to do and to try and to keep on trying to better. Uh, also, I think maybe a society would work where you can put money into insurances uh, because insurances are kind of competing governments in terms of uh, uh, looking out for the unfortunate few. You know, you, everyone puts in money to an insurance uh, that then pays out to the unfortunate few that have car accidents, for instance. Um, but it's nevertheless, uh, I think what what we need to do right now is to e educate ourselves on what money is and and. This is the what I love about crypto is that people have really educated themselves on what money is, how money interacts, how uh, what money does, not only the seen but the unseen, and uh, and that's why I really like this space because it was only you know ten years ago that no one was talking about where money comes from, what is money, who prints it, who makes it. You, know, you ask someone where's money come from, they say from my boss. And uh, they just don't get it. So, uh, yeah, I, I think there's uh, there's a lot to because you know, we can we can argue till the cows come home about free markets or social markets. And uh, I think you know at the end of the day, there's not a black or white. It's a very uh, uh, it's a very grey zoned, moving, constantly fluctuating um, uh, philosophy. And um, and yeah, I mean it's 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 vast. Well, it, was a, it was impressive to see the word fiat take off because fiat has always been yeah. a way of saying, you know, oh, you just print money, uh, government, because you want to. And other people are like, oh, yeah. we print it because we had to or we printed it for a good reason or whatever. But if you say fiat, you say let it be done is what you're saying. Uh, they printed it for, you know, reason because they wanted to. Uh, that's taken off. A lot of people in the Bitcoin space call uh, traditional currencies fiat uh, without even knowing that they're slurring uh, the other currency. So I think that's a big win. It is great to see people talk about this because of Bitcoin and because of other things, and even to see people learn about you know, what is the Dow Jones Industrial Average? What are these trader things with the ups and the downs and all these markets? A lot of people have to learn a lot of things uh, when they get into Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, so Jeremy Saga here said, uh, how can you not help your fellow man as a libertarian? And I agree. I am, uh, that's why I bought way more <laughs> food than I needed. Uh, in terms of, like ages ago, I didn't like 
go and like stock up on crazy amounts or anything. But but uh, you know, it's, uh, instead of just enough rice for me, I thought, well, my uh, these people that I love also would need some, and they're laughing at me now, but I'll, I'll get some. And uh, I also give a lot of money uh, away to charity. I'm always giving people money that I think uh, deserve it, and and uh, in terms of on the street, um, you know, people that need help. Um, it's it's important, and I don't actually know anybody that hasn't ever done that. I mean, do you know anyone that's never given to charity, Thomas? I don't know anybody that's never given to charity or given to the person on the street, even if you don't think it's going to help and you know they're going to go take it and buy drugs or alcohol or whatever. You still, you see that yeah. person, they ask you for their help. Maybe they have a story. They need to buy gas or something or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, after yeah. a while you don't, but the first couple you definitely do, and I think everyone wants to help other people. And yeah. uh, I think a lot of what we're talking about here is the old Aesop's fable with the uh, grasshopper and the ant. And the ant is busy stocking away his supplies and preparing for the worst. And the grasshopper's up there dancing and doing nothing. And when it gets cold, the ant's very happy and the grasshopper's sad. Uh, the problem is, in this fable, is that the ant just can't stay in the hole. The ant just can't stock his own supply. Uh, you have to learn the lessons of the Lord of the Rings, which is if they just stayed there in the Shire, the outside world comes to the Shire too. Uh, Cause see, Jeremy said a little while ago, he's saying, trying to kind of defend libertarianism. And he said, libertarian means you want to be left alone. And uh, the sad part of this world that we're really learning with this virus and everything, there is no alone. Like, I mean, I, there, I don't know, there's not even a separation between me and this computer, right? There's molecules of air and there's smaller molecules and there's other molecules. And there's, there's a whole wave of things, you know, in between me and this camera. Uh, I can't even be alone from this camera. And uh, politically, economically, all seems to follow what we know scientifically, uh, that everything is connected and everything affects You are one with the, com with the computer, Daniel. It son. is. It is. People don't want to believe it. And there's this whole American individualism and these idealisms and all these isms that uh, we're going to see destroyed, right? We're going to see like, oh, well, what do you, you know, do you really believe in that? Or should people have some health care? Or should they have some uh, sick leave? Or should they have, oh, how much should we charge for this medicine that cures people uh, from the coronavirus? Should we give it to everyone? Uh, so on and so forth. We're going to come up right against those ideas. And on the other side, when we get through this thing and we're at the other side looking at it, we're going to have to say, if we had Medicare for all, if we had universal health care like they have in Europe, uh, if people weren't afraid to go to the doctor because it means you go bankrupt, uh, you know, if we had these things, would we be in a better position to fight the next virus, which might even be the same virus? So we're not to see. I don't know, man. I don't know if you would be because the, uh, the, the British healthcare system is also going to be a wreck <laughs> from this, I've got to say. But uh, I, I've got to agree with, uh, with Rad here that uh, libertarianism isn't really about isolationism. It's, it's just independence without force, you know, not being forced to, uh, to, to give. And I, and I think there is something to that. Like, uh, I have heard a lot of people, and this really aggravates me. I, I, I say, hey, you know, you should, um, you should donate to this and this. Uh, or, or I say, hey, did you give something to this homeless charity? No. I, I, that's why I pay my taxes. And they're like almost angry about it. <laughs> it's like, man, come on. You know, uh, and a lot of people sort of, they, they, they offset their, their charity onto the tax man because they're already just pissed off that they've had to do all this work and everything else. One thing they could do, I think one step we can all take is easier taxation. I mean, if you're gonna take money from me, then uh, please make it easier, man. Don't make me work. Well, but there's, um, there's another, like a, there's another wedge in, the in there. That's part of the wedge of the libertarianism and, and kind of this um, individual freedom that the government shouldn't know how much money I make. And if the government doesn't know how much money I make, they don't know how much to charge me. So now we're into this IRS system where I'm purporting that I made this much and the government says, well, that looks okay. Or maybe they say, wait a minute, he brought a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. We need to investigate him. He made more than he said he did or whatever. Uh, so that's, yeah. unfortunately, that's our system where it's this 
And and maybe I imagine if you just think about it from a computer science perspective, we could probably have a dual black box system of some kind of interlocking back end uh, where these things two these two things connect, but the government can't make the connection, but we can say that they're true. I'm sure that scientifically we someone you know could build that kind of system, and then we could have the government know how much I made, but not know who I am, and then know who I am but not know how much, you know, vice versa, these kind of systems. This could be built, but obviously we don't have that. <laughs> so, uh, and then we have this other thing where uh, TurboTax, these big companies have fought the IRS and made it impossible for the IRS to offer their own tax system that would then fight TurboTax and give you TurboTax for free. Uh, I'm just saying- Not that, only that, not only that, I, I read an article where one of the tax schemes- is, and I agree with uh, Jeremy on this tax, it should be voluntary in a way. But um, but anyway, uh, one of the tax schemes was where the IRS, because the IRS already know exactly how much you make and everything like that. Everything's through cards and credit cards and bank systems. So the IRS, the one of the schemes is the IRS just knows what and just charges you, sends you a bill. Now, if you reject that bill, then you do your taxes and prove that it's actually less. Um, and this would this would bring productivity throughout the US, this is a US structure, throughout the US, vast amounts of productivity because uh, people can actually get on with doing work instead of filling in crazy forms and, and keeping track of everything uh, like, like, a, like a nut job. Uh, because the amount of work and the amount of money you pay to the, tank, to the, to the accountants are just crazy. It's, it's nuts. Uh, my father, he, he's just every time I ask him, hey, what are you up to on the weekend? I have to do my taxes. Uh, I think, man, you know, it, it's just insane. So imagine if you just get a bill and you're like, well, that, that's way too much. I'm going to actually do all my work and, and, and put my work in. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's way less. So then I can, uh, I can go against that. Uh, but apparently the, uh, the big tax firms in the U.S., um, uh, I've forgotten what they're called. Uh, you know, I'm not an American, but the big big tax tax firms have all these lobby groups that have put a stop to that because it would mean that all of their services are null and void, of course. They're definitely putting a stop to that. It's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I would much rather pay a bill. It would be much more direct. I could understand it. Uh, to have this system that makes no sense, uh, except for just a few people, uh, makes no sense to anyone. Like it just doesn't, why would you do that? But, uh, I'll, I'll put it down. That's now the fourth plank of my platform. Uh, let's see. End daylight savings time. Get rid of the yeah. penny, the nickel, the dime, other small denominations of worthless currency. Uh, switch to the metric system and uh, yes. get, get a tax bill instead of a tax question mark. Uh, that's my new four point. Go. Those are non-political um, plans. So those are non-political ideas. So we'll run on those. So. There you go. go. Yeah, I like the metric system one. Yeah. Never understood measuring things in some random person's foot. Oh, it's terrible. And after we lost that um <laughs> after we lost that Mars rover or whatever it was that we lost one of the probes, I was like, "Okay, uh, that's enough. Let's all agree. Metric from now on." Like we lost it cuz of the conversion. You know, that happened once. I agree. It's it's yeah. terrible. Like happened once, done. Let's let's not lose another one. But uh no, oh, we just keep losing them. So it's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. So uh, remember, folks, drill that like button. Once you can join us on Skype in the World Crypto Network, it's uh, it's 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 the place to be. Join us on this conversation. Um, we'll uh, we'll talk about anything. We're having a competition now. We've got the new graphics that I'm working on here. Uh, one of them says that there are 73 people watching, and that 30 of them have liked us. So thanks so much to the 30. And uh, to the other 40, think about giving us a like and a subscribe if you're new here. Uh, also, if you want to join the conversation, we have a rare opportunity today. You can call us at 1-518-600-1949 or on Skype at World Crypto Network. Or you can uh, put your question here into the chat. Uh, we're working on the graphics. Maybe we'll try to make the chat a little bigger uh, or rewind the chat if we missed your question. Uh, but, yeah, we're all watching the stock market today. Uh, we all know just as much as you and anybody else. Uh, so you're just as big an expert to talk about it as we are. Or uh, those idiots on TV. Uh, I watched lots of those idiots lately. 
and uh, they don't know any more than you do or anybody else. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Messing with the graphics the, uh, here. We, we have the Bitcoin motorist here saying that the metric system sucks. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. But uh, I, and he's saying, what's it equivalent to? Teaspoons, tablespoons? No, no, no. The metric system is based on atomic uh, atomic um, sizes, but it's also based on the tens, on the tens of things. So, uh, you know, uh, Celsius, zero is freezing, 100 is boiling. And, um, and it's quite amazing that that is the case, but uh, it kind of makes sense. So when you when it gets cold and you're at zero, you know it's freezing temperature. And when it's at 100, it's uh, you're boiling. You're pretty much your blood's boiling. It makes so much more sense to be able to convert from the tens to do like centimeters to millimeters, millimeters to centimeters, up to meters. And you can do all of those Kilometers. calculations. Kilometer, all these things. You do not need uh, the conversion. So from a scientific perspective, it's better. That's the point of a measurement system is that you should use one that's better, that's linked, that's the same as the rest of the world. Uh, and then we wouldn't lose any more Mars rovers. So I'm just on this. Yeah, I mean, no the, more Mars rovers lost. I did, I did a sailing test, Thomas. I got my sailor's cap on. And um, and it's quite amazing how how crazy sailing is. I mean, you think about <laughs> the, the system there, they're still talking in knots. I mean, the amount of knots in a rope that you sort of hang off the side of the boat and you see how many knots you go past uh, in a minute. And that's kind of how fast you're moving. <laughs> it's like crazy. And then, and then there's neat, which is uh, the tide. And uh, there's all these ancient words that just haven't moved, haven't changed because of this network effect and Bitcoin as well as Ethereum, they, 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 they get stuck with this network effect. And for instance, uh, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of work with the concepts of tokenizing gold. And it, we started, we, we were looking at Bitcoin, we were looking at uh, the, the Lightning Network and RGB, and we're still working on uh, some of the RGB stuff to do this. But one of the things that really stood out was whenever talking to a lot of wallets and all these different, the, the infrastructure was that the network effect had taken on with the ERC20 uh, compatible technology. And so it was just much easier for them to incorporate that. And so I think that's the same with the metric system and all the rest of it. You've got this infrastructure of understanding, schooling. And so if you say to someone a centimeter in the United States, they look at you blankly, they really don't know. And the same thing goes for over here. If you talk about feet and inches, people are like, oh, I don't really understand. Funnily enough, in Australia, if, uh, it's all, it's all the, uh, the metric system, except when you talk about your height, uh, you still say feet and inches. You say, oh, I'm six foot seven or whatever. I've noticed that in England, they're always talking about how much they weigh in uh, stones. That's a very weird system. <laughs> stones like well how much does a stone weigh <laughs> I, don't, I just i don't have that how big that. is this stone it's it's a king stone it's the best stone actually somewhere i have this i have this great book about the stone of scone which every king sits upon before he is kinged and uh, they have it in scotland and they steal it down to england every time they want to uh, bring in a new king and uh, they hide it in the in the bench but it's just a big rock magic rock Magic rock, yeah. It's, 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 the, the systems are interesting. Uh, we've got here, the Bitcoin motorist really, really doesn't like the metric system, which is uh, very interesting. Because um, it's a it's know, top-down control. It's one of those, like, because it arrives through top-down control, it must be bad, regardless of the fact that it is good. It's a standard. Agreeing on a standard, and this is part of why libertarian society doesn't work and there isn't any libertarian society is that you can't agree on standards. I went to a factory once I went on this incredible tour. I saw it was the, um, it was a Mercedes Benz. Yeah, I'm screwed up. Royals Royce. It was the Royals Royce engine factory and in England. And it was amazing. And they had these engines that are for airplanes. Right. And I learned a lot about airplane engines there and I'm very pleased with airplane engines now. Uh, I learned that airplane engines are owned by banks because they're so expensive, the insurance policies and the complexities of these machines. And I learned that if they have any engineers who 
decide to go it their own way, or maybe they had a better idea than the other airplane mechanics, they fire that engineer immediately. At this airplane mechanic, everyone's on the same page. Everyone fixes the airplane the same way. They follow the schematics. The schematics come down from the factory. The factory designs the airplanes through the computers, through the tunnels, through all these things, all these systems of scientific interlocking trust of people who will all do what is necessary. No one, no one has their own ideas. No one has their own, like, I'm the king of airplane manufacturing today. No, no. They all work together. And I don't think there's a single libertarian in the factory. There's not a single one. No, but they're all they're all voluntarily there. They do, and they're all voluntarily there. They're all using their brains at their best possible ability. They're all part of an important team. They might not design the airplanes or the engines, but they do uh, refurbish them. They do fix them, and they follow manuals. And that's it. We need standards. We need we need manuals. We need people who are willing to, and it comes down to Dunning-Kruger, I think, when we really come down to the end of this, uh, when it comes down, you say, well, if you're really smart, you've met other smart people, and you know that there's somebody out there like Robert Oppenheimer or like Bram Cohen who invented BitTorrent or Satoshi Nakamoto who invented Bitcoin. There's somebody smarter than you. <laughs> you might be the hottest hotshot Bitcoin programmer and you've never been stopped. Well, obviously Satoshi's smarter than you. He created the system, uh, all these things. So... Well it, but if you're a dumb true, person, you're true. out there, you're like, I'm the smartest person in the world. I can fix this airplane engine better than anyone else. Uh, I can create my own company fixing airplane engines better than you. Why? I oughta, I'm going to go all John Galt and live in the hills and make, make my own engines. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. Like, it no, but, like, that's, that, that, but that's not libertarianism. That's, uh, that's just strange. Uh, <laughs> it's just being wacky. I mean, it's, it's about voluntary interaction if you want to get together with smart people. But you're right. I mean, I, I'm 42, and uh, I've got to say, in my 42 years, one thing I do know is no matter how good I am at, at anything, there's always a five-year-old Asian kid that's way better than me. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, a, a piano. I started getting good at piano. Forget about it. That's, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So uh, we we have let check the markets. What what's happening in the markets? Have they re-initiated uh, another circuit break? Uh, uh, it looks Eric. like we've uh, we've climbed up the mountain just a little bit here. Then we had a dip. Then we had a little other mountain, and then we're starting to head back downward. Uh, remember, the circuit breakers are they are cumulative. So because we already went to the seven percent drop, we won't see another circuit breaker if we go through seven. We have to go all the way to 13% down uh, before we'd see another stop, another 15-minute pause. After that, if we go a full 20% down in the entire day, uh, we would see a full stop. Uh, the entire day would stop, and we would come back tomorrow. Uh, meanwhile, the Bitcoin price would continue to do whatever it wants to do, as well as the Ethereum price and the rest of the crypto markets. Uh, IOTA still paused. <laughs> well, maybe the blockchain uh, at least it was last I checked. I don't know anything about IOTA. But uh, no, we're at 24,248 on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, down 1,617 points today. That's a 6% drop. Uh, the initial drop was 7%, so we are starting to perhaps wind up uh, going towards that. We still have about three and a half hours of stock market activity uh, going on before the merciful close at 4 p.m. today. Yeah, we've got still got time for that cat to bounce off of the road and onto somebody's windshield. Uh, we'll see how, how far up it bounces before it splats. Checking out the chat. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, likes. We're up to 33 likes. Thanks to everybody for pushing that like button. I know it's uh, really free. Uh, we also had one down vote. Uh, it's also cool, though. Uh, YouTube is just actually measuring activity. Uh, so if a video gets a lot of down votes, it's almost the same as getting a lot of up votes. Uh, it's an activity. Yeah, down vote the shit out of this video. No, guys. no it's down good. votes. I, they're, still, <laughs> they're still negative. They're still like, oh, you did this show for free to entertain and educate people i'm like oh i hate you no no that down down vote <laughs> down vote is for like oh you know this is these people tried hard but the sound doesn't work or 
uh, you know, these people are, you know, promoting some kind of bad ideology or uh, down votes or, you know, let's, let's uh, all up votes. Like the Facebook says, there's only likes, there are no dislikes. Uh, but we have, 70- I got to say, uh, Go ahead, John. sorry. No, I got to say, I, I agree with rad here. Um, yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, we have, we, we have both, both flavors on this show. We've got the, the, the anarcho-capitalist gold bug, and we have the, uh, the social leaning Thomas Hunter. He's obviously got a, a good head on his shoulders as well. Again, folks, these are all ideas. You know, I get a lot of flack for a lot of my ideas in terms of, uh, you know, crazy and cap ideas. And they, they shoot me down and, I, and they get really angry and nasty, Thomas. And it's funny because I just think, well, no, I'm, I'm just living in a sort of a sci-fi world where I try to try to come up with concepts of how uh, societies could work without pointing guns at people's heads um, and, and extracting wealth. I wonder how we can do it in other ways. And, and, and it's the same goes for everyone else. You know, the same goes for what you're talking about. It, it's a lot of it is still theoretical. I mean, the, especially the, um, uh, the minimal wage concept of, of uh, giving everybody an X amount of wage every month of printing that uh, it's, it's all, it's all just uh, a theory and interesting to talk about. And we shouldn't be smashing each other over the heads and, and being angry. We should uh, continue uh, talking and, uh, and discussing because this is how we move forward in society. And, you know, this is actually one thing I really love about Bitcoin is that you can try economic theory without the, uh, the craziness that are the Russian gulags. Uh, we have, Thomas Hunt has disappeared off the chat. He's, uh, he's left us in the lurch. I'm just um, looking through the, uh, the chat by here. Standing, my standing desk, it's not quite set up yet. Uh, oh, nice. After an standing hour desk. or whatever, I think that's very modern. The, the problem the is standing not, desk. too much sitting, too much sitting, not enough standing. You're right. You're right. Oh, there you go. Nice time. Oh, wow. Transformers more than meets the eye. <laughs> I don't know if that is. Where's the transformer? Yeah. <laughs> We're ready now. So, Let's do some news, huh? Let's see what else is going on in the world of news. Here we go. Oil crashes by most since 1991 as Saudi Arabia launches price war. Uh, just for everyone that's tuning in, the Dow Jones is down quite a lot, and it's down because of this uh, Saudi Arabia news as well. Let's see what happened to my Dow Jones tracker. It's broken. <laughs> oh, well, we'll fix these graphics tomorrow. Oh, good. More things are popping up. But, yes, uh, Saudi Arabia has also done this today. Uh, on the coronavirus day. So we have a twofer. Uh, To start with, oil prices are down around 20% uh, because Saudi Arabia, they had a deal with Russia and OPEC. So they talked to Russia and they said, okay, we want to uh, drive the prices down. We were selling too much. So it didn't work. Russia said no. Uh, So now Saudi Arabia said, well, we can do it on our own. We're going to produce more oil and we're going to cause the price to go down. Uh, which is bad for Russia, and it's bad for the United States, uh, who produces shale oil now. All the shale oil people are in danger of being wrecked. And this is happening on the same day as the coronavirus thing. So it's a a dual thing, knocking the markets down from both ways. As they're saying, this is the greatest oil crash since 1991, when a war started, a war that would limit the supply of oil. So the Saudi Arabia supply crackdown is as bad as a war starting in 1991 is what the market is telling you today. Yeah, that was a weird one because if a war cracks down on supply, wouldn't the price go up? Well, if you, if you can't get any of it out of the region though, like if you can't like the really, the real thing about supply is that there are, there are certain things that really stop supply. Like when the Bitcoin halving happens, there will be less Bitcoin in the same way. If you can't get oil out of the region, because like the the way is physically blocked with like a big burning ship, or there's a blockade, or the other the pipeline is blown up uh, because of yeah the bombs. price goes up yeah you know then it's well but at a certain point there's nothing to sell <laughs> I mean then it goes down so I don't know I think that the price would go up but we'll see I, I think we'll they, see we'll see 
I think they just think and there'll I, be nothing to sell. And there'll be, it doesn't matter how much demand you have. There's nothing to sell. I don't know. I, I, I tell you who will really suffer through all this, uh, this, this oil collapses really uh, the venezuelans uh they're already really suffering but they're going to suffer more more and more and more because uh they just c cannot produce their oil because again uh governments control the entire oil industry uh, the, the the they have no they had no incentive for for a long long time to make it efficient and um and uh yeah now now they they just don't have the capacity to even pull that stuff out of the ground and uh, the, you know the venezuelans are really suffering a lot under that regime and it's and it's sad to see they are and they have no choice they are locked into oil they can't really get out into bitcoin or any other commodity oil is what they have yeah actually and this is a really good point when you have uh when you have big crashes like this uh, people expect gold to instantly jump up but again when people don't have money, they don't have money to buy gold. When they don't have money, they don't have money to buy Bitcoin. And this is why we don't see Bitcoin skyrocketing during times of crisis. Uh, this is why you see Bitcoin skyrocketing when it's good, when people are going good, because they get the Christmas bonus. It's doing good. They're going to put buy some Bitcoin. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I, like I said before, oil, um, sorry, gold and, and Bitcoin tend to go up when inflation starts kicking in. So right now is the crisis moment. The crisis moment will be, uh, will be um, uh, tried to band-aid over with a bunch of money printing. And that money printing will lead to a higher price in, in the, uh, the metals and the Bitcoins. Well, and that's what they were saying on Twitter recently, that the uh, U.S. was going to go through lots and lots of money printing and uh, that this meant that the Bitcoin price was forever golden and you should stack as many sats as you can. Uh, Josh, what do you think of this new kind of Bitcoin prosperity gospel that we're getting these days where uh, in the old days, you know, we all used to say, hey, I like Bitcoin. I like the technology. I think it's a good idea. I'm, I'm down for like freedom and liberty. Some of these like more cypherpunk ideas or, or uh, libertarian ideas, whatever you want to say. Uh, but now the Bitcoin idea that I get a lot is just that Stacking sats leads to wealth. I'm going to just keep stacking sats no matter what happens. I'm never going to take profits. I'm going to hodl forever. I'm going to stack sats, and I'm going to be wealthy. Uh, what do you think, Josh? Can I sell you that? <laughs> I think it's I, I think it's crazy. I think it's crazy. It's it's really kind of awful and 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 puts me off of going to events. See all these sort of Lambo moon freaks who are obsessed with with baubles and and looking looking wealthy and and uh, having the latest uh, the latest shoes and the latest jeans and big watches and, and you just think ah oh, it's kind of you know dude you, you don't understand life yet do you yeah you, you have to need to live a few more lifetimes before you actually get understand that it's not about uh, making the the number go up on a, on a on a on a ledger uh, life is about having a good time about having uh, good loved ones around you, having health. Um, of course, there's a certain amount of money you need to do this stuff. Um, but uh, there's once you get to a certain point, there's it doesn't matter how much money you get. It, it becomes a game. After a certain point, it's not about happiness and stuff. It becomes a game. And, and that's fine too. If you want to continue stacking sats and, and, and that's the game, um, then uh, you know that that's your thing, that's your shtick. Uh, people like Donald Trump, they're into it. They're into just gaining more and more and more and more. Um, but but at the same time, for true happiness, it's really not what you need. But I've always said, Thomas, that Bitcoin's a funny. It's a funny beast. If we don't get you with the uh, with the libertarian ideas and the cypherpunks and the, and and that, we'll get you with uh, with the greed. And if we don't get you with the greed, we'll get you through the need to maybe trade across borders. If we don't get you from the need, then we'll get you um, from the uh, from some other way. I don't know, but but there's multiple levels. I can't think of them all right now. I wrote a big blog post about it. Um, but uh, there's multiple ways we'll get you because 
Um, yeah, it has so many facets to it, Bitcoin. There is, and there's different levels to the philosophy, like you're saying. Uh, people come in for the wealth, then they realize what it's doing to the money system and how they're no longer going to lose money because of inflation. So you could actually buy a house and you the, could actually hand it off yeah. to your children. Uh, you have that choice now. So we have these different on ramps of people. And then there's people like, I want to send money privately, or I want to be a cypherpunk, or I want a one way transaction. You know, I want to get my money and be done with it. Uh, there's a lot there of those go. people. There's a lot of different reasons to come to Bitcoin. Uh, I was trying yep. to find a, a good quote or a good Buddha quote or something. I don't know if I'm going to find it. This book's a little big. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that's very hard to find. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's a nice fat book there. Tom, it's too it's big. Say. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find a smaller Buddha book. Uh, get you guys a good Buddha quote. But um, no, I, I think I, I mean Buddhist books that I know are usually like these tiny little pocket books. Oh no, th this <laughs> you, one. This one's a, this, epic. this one's aggressive. Uh, so the other. <laughs> I tell you what looks aggressive. That graph there, jeepers creepers. Uh, it's the Bitcoin. It's been going up and down. There's been people that want to buy and people that want to sell. Uh, who would have thought? Let's see. Oh, here's a highlighted patch by somebody else who owned the book before me because I don't really highlight that much. For these reasons, I have come to understand that the overall message is not to avoid the world, but rather to avoid being attached. And I think the people who still think that there's any kind of uh, salvation in wealth or in Lamborghinis or, or at one point I'll get all the bills paid off and then next month there'll be more bills. Uh, you have to go beyond that. You have to have a reason for doing what you're doing. And that's why a lot of th people think, you know, Rad Vladdy was talking about um, buying and hodling to change the world for his kids. And I think even by just talking about Bitcoin, by being interested in in Bitcoin, uh, we are changing the world for the kids, even just by eliminating that inflation and having that idea that maybe we could give a house to our kids that would still be worth a house in a hundred years uh, instead of worth 20% of a house. <laughs> it's not the yeah. same. So Nice, nice. We have 39 likes. Guys, it's free to hit that like button, and it helps the show out a lot and, uh, and helps other people find the show. Make sure you do that. It's uh, it's an easy one to do, and it's fun. It's hilarious. <laughs> the button changes, changes colors. Uh, thanks it's to crazy. YouTube. YouTube spent so much time on the like button and the subscribe button. Like seeing those new animations every month, every week they have a new guest artist describing the like button and the subscribe button. Really, the the amount of work that they do on this platform to help creators. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> and, the, I mean, and the same thing on Twitter, like Twitter, every time Twitter is like, we want to get your message in front of all of your followers. That's why we invented Twitter ads so that you could pay us to get your message in front of all of your followers. Yes. Well, that was the downfall of Facebook. You know, people built these uh, large groups of people. They put a lot of effort to make great content, to create these groups. And then Facebook, uh, basically said, no, to reach any of these people, you have to pay us. And so everyone left Facebook. So what are, what are we going to do with all these people that uh, just want money and they want to get rich? They're stacking those sets. Maybe we'll tell them, you are already enlightened. All you've got to do is stop blocking yourself and get serious about attending to what's going on. You are not lacking a thing. You need only stop blocking or interpreting your vision. And uh, I reminded of another book I read recently. This is from uh, Buddhism, Plain and Simple. This is a great book if you guys want to check this out. Uh, the cover's on upside down, though, so that's very deceptive. But uh, no, I was reading The Wizard of Oz recently. It was on my Kindle for free, uh, so I read it, and I'd never read it. I'd seen the movie a hundred times. Uh, but each one of the people in the movie and the book Wizard of Oz are tested. Uh, the Scarecrow wants to have more uh, heart, right? He doesn't have any brains. The uh, uh, Tin Man needs heart. He doesn't have a heart. He's not connected to the world. Uh, this, the cur Cowardly Lion lacks courage, right? He can't fight. He needs strength uh, from the wizard. And in the end, the wizard, uh, to get them to do that, he says, well, you have to go on this quest and you have to help Dorothy. And each of them proves during the quest that they have brains, that they have heart, that they have courage. 
Uh, so when they come back to the wizard and the wizard says, well, you already have it. And, you know, in the movie, he gives them trinkets and the trinkets kind of satisfy them. And in a way, maybe the trinkets represent the brain. You know, he has the degree uh, from the wizard. Oh, the, the degree imbued him with the power of the brain and, you know, represents it in some way. But really, these people already had it. They already had the brain. They already had the courage. They already had the heart. I don't know about Dorothy. I don't know that she already had Kansas. Maybe she was there all the time in the way that it was a dream. Uh, that works for me. But um, yeah, yeah, that's what, and that's a very Buddhist message there, hidden in the Wizard of Oz. You already have. You are already the ones that you've been waiting for. You're already full. Uh, you know, you you now is the same as you with a million dollars. Do you have a list yeah. of how to spend it? Do you have a list of what charities to give it to? Are you going to buy such and such an artwork? Do you have such, do you have a plan? Because otherwise you're the same. You have the same uh, foibles. You have the same laziness. You have the same, you know, whatever is missing in your life. You won't do the sit-ups. Uh, you know, you're, you don't read the yeah. books. You don't put the time in. You don't learn the programming. Uh, you know, it's all on you. You know, it's all it's all on me too, for sure. I'm talking about myself too. But um, no, it's all on you. Actually, I, I tweeted the other day. I just put my Twitter handle in the chat there for anyone that wants to follow me. Um, I tweeted the other day that because someone was saying, oh, well, they wouldn't have any problems because they've got billions. I said, look, single people have single people's problems. Married people have married people's problems. Poor people have poor people's problems. And rich people have rich people's problems. There is always going to be problems. You have problems whatever you are. I mean, rich people, you wouldn't be, believe the amount of problems they have. Do you know how many people are constantly paranoid about their kids getting kidnapped on the way home from school? Like, it, 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 there's so many problems when you're rich um, uh, that, uh, that it's, it, it's just different. You just have different problems. So to think that you're going to be trouble-free only if you just stack another sat, if you stack some more gold, if you stack some more money, look, it might help in a certain way, but it's definitely not going to uh, be the solver of problems. Um, there, you know. I also, I wouldn't say that being poor is any good either. You know, what I'm saying is that you want enough to be able to live without worrying about bills. You want enough that you can buy that trip away, uh, have that that, uh, that that doodad that you want if you do want a new iPad, it's kind of nice to be able to buy that. Um, but there's a certain point where, you know, you have, you have millions and it doesn't matter if you have 5 million or 20 or 50 or 100, it sort of gets useless. Um, you know, I mean, Brock Pierce would say if you've got a billion dollars, you can uh, solve a billion people's problems. Uh, I think I've, I've heard him quote that or something like that. I'm, I'm sure. I'm wondering if if Brock has actually done that. Uh, we'll see. I, uh, I, but, I wish I was as optimistic as Brock and that I thought it was as easy to help people with money uh, as he does or did or or whatever they're up to out there with all that money. I think a lot of it you have to. I mean, a lot of these are thought experiments and you have to really continue and you have to complete the thought experiment. You can't just stop halfway through. And I know. Uh, for myself, I was sitting at this same desk years ago, and uh, I decided not to buy Bitcoin at that time uh, because Bitcoin would make me too rich, and rich people were all jerks, and rich people really just had greater debts, right? Uh, I knew all the lawyers that I worked with. They had, uh, they had greater debts. Uh, they had greater houses, sure, greater cars, whatever, and greater debts, and they paid them with their greater salaries, and at the time... I wasn't thinking beyond the lawyers or beyond the rich people that maybe I had come in contact with. I wasn't thinking about you know maybe a great uh, you know philanthrop philanthropic uh, rich person, not just somebody like Carnegie or uh, Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or whatever who gives up their wealth afterwards, uh, but a person who maybe is gifted or granted this great wealth and then that goes out there and tries to do something positive, whether on a large scale or a small scale, like, uh, for example, that guy from uh, Procter & Gamble who made uh, the uh, Thrive film. Uh, that's an interesting guy. He, he got a lot of wealth, and he went out into all these kind of hippie causes, and he made a cool movie called Thrive. You can check it out. It's kind of conspiracy theory movie. Um, but 
you know, maybe you could be that good rich person. And I think that in that way, Brock's, Brock's thought experiment is right on. Uh, if you had the money, don't just think what kind of cars you could buy or what kind of Lambo you could drive or whatever it is. Think who could you help? Who could you help with that money? Because unfortunately, uh, and I didn't think it would be this fast or anything. No one thought that, you know, Bitcoin would be, you know, three years, three years, five years, you'll be ridiculously wealthy and you'll really have these problems of, of how many billions of people can you help with your billion dollars or whatever Brock's up to. Uh, but uh, no, you have to think, you know, what kind of good rich person would I be? And then, you know, instantly when you think of it that way and you don't think of the Lambos, you're like, well, you know, I could I could buy medical care for my family. I could buy medical care for my friends. I could send friends, kids through college. And then suddenly uh, you don't just need, you know, a million dollars. You could last out the rest of your life or or 10 million or whatever you need. Uh, you need 30 million. You need 40 million. You need 50 million because you have so many more people to take care of. Uh, than you originally thought. And then pretty soon uh, you're a socialist, right? You're out there, you know, taking care of all these kids, sending them to all the colleges, uh, handling the medical care of your friends and family. Uh, you just become this socialist billionaire. Uh, but maybe that was because really it wasn't the money that you wanted, but the ability to help your community, the ability to be better connected uh, both to the things that they want and the things that they don't want, to the goods and the bads. Uh, you know, you could help them. You could send them on a trip or you could give them to a college or whatever. You could, you know, help them with a bad thing. You could help them get through a, a medical problem or, or, you know, even the, the biggest. But that's not problem. really socialist. That's more uh, voluntarist, uh, free, uh, freedom of uh, expression and freedom of giving. And I think that's Yeah, you're right, because uh, it's voluntarily. Important. It's my choice to help these people, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Ayn, Ayn Rand would say that there is no altruism and that all this helping people I'm really doing so I can feel good. And that so therefore, and, and that's the way that she wrecks things. And that's why I don't like her. Yeah. Um, because yeah, yeah, she wrecks she, things. She, she, so, and I, I, you know, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I mean, and there is, yeah, there's good that I'd get, but there's also like the presumption that I think it's good for society to go up. And I think it's good for all these people to go up. And if people go to college, they'll learn more and they'll do better things. And that's good for me. And in the same way that I, whenever we talk about healthcare, I'm always in favor of a Medicare for all type system because greedily as a capitalist, I want people to go to work to make more widgets so that we can sell more widgets so that we can profit. So the market can go up. So everyone can go up. Uh, if people are sick and staying yeah. home, which we're about to see with this coronavirus, they're not out there making widgets. In the same way, we're going to see it in entertainment. Uh, people aren't going to go to shows. They aren't going to go to casinos. They're not going to go to movies, all these kind of things. Like we're going to take it on entertainment too. So uh, it really is interconnected. It really is like you need those customers. Uh, they have said, you know, with the cigarette companies, I mean, I guess they were, they were nicotine fixing. So they were making it so people would stay on cigarettes, but uh, they're also killing their customers. <laughs> if you have a product that kills your customer, you're always going to need new customers. You're always going to see your customers as disposable. Uh, we need to be thinking more about long term with everyone, with our customers, everyone with our our government, uh, which is kind of like our human services, right? I mean, we can say taxes or we can say revenue. The revenue department of our human services that we provide for other humans, uh, you know, we can we can phrase things how you guys want to. Uh, we can look at it positively or negatively, and sure, there's a lot of bureaucracy there. Uh, but maybe now we have interlocking blockchain systems. We have databases. Uh, we have ways to keep people in track and control uh, that would maybe allow that money to be spent efficiently. So maybe there are better options. So, Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I think you'd, you'd, people would be better off being able to um, uh, have systems in place to, to have a medical society. But I... I Sick when when forty I think where did I read last night it was sixty percent sixty one percent of all bankruptcies in the United States are due to medical reasons I mean that's just that's just insane and uh, me being being a crazy uh, anarcho capitalist wouldn't wouldn't say that uh, doing uh, not doing anything is 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 really not an option. We, the United States needs to change something because that's just a terrible system. And if in the meantime, you need to do something like uh, pull everyone, take some of the money that you're going to spend on armaments and on crap like that 
and actually put it into healthcare, then, um, uh, then, then you can start looking at building a better system in terms of insurances. Like uh, Germany is all based on insurance, except if you are homeless or you, don't, you can't afford the insurance, then the state pays for the insurance for that time. Um, uh, that also has, has holes, people fall through it. But the thing is, uh, Med Medicare, you know, doctors, doctors don't work for nothing uh, and they shouldn't and uh, because they studied very hard to become that. And uh, these people need to be paid. But uh, at the same time, you get uh, really messed up systems. Like the United States, I mean, come on. Do you really need to go to uh, all these lobbyists basically have made it that you can't, a nurse can't just take a swab of the tongue and, uh, and send that off to a lab to get tested. No, 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 no. A doctor has to do that, that has studied years to become a doctor. Uh, they, they must do that. And, and, uh, and you're not allowed to become a doctor in, by uh, going to night in school. Anymore. South Korea, no, no, no. In South Korea, they have yeah. drive through coronavirus testing. They're ahead of us on drive through technology and they don't, they're not even really using a building. They're just kind of having you drive around the parking lot to pre set stations where they're able to get samples from you and communicate with you without infecting themselves. Whereas in America, we're having people go, well, they're saying now they're saying, don't go to the doctor's office. We're going to have a system for you. But if you just go to the doctor's office, you're infecting everyone else. They're all infecting you. It's, it's all bad. And yet right now, we're, you know, we're not, we're not seeing it on the news. We're not go to your local coronavirus testing station, go to your local post office at every post office. We've set up coronavirus testing stations that are drive through that don't get those people sick, that don't get you sick uh, or sicker. Uh, and no, we're not doing that. We're not. And a lot of this, we Trump fired the people that are supposed to be in charge of this. I, it's it's so awful because everyone we're, we're telling you and we're telling you and we're telling you and we're like yeah you know they fired everyone that worked at CDC and we fired everyone and they didn't staff all these offices. Well, here it is. We're coming home to roost. You wanted less government. You wanted more accountable government. A government you could dr drown in a bathtub. Uh, well, now you're gonna get it. And uh, the people who we only uh, it's a disappointing society. It's very frustrating, and it's not. It's not an, any one person's fault. All I think all people want to change this. We all want to do good. But uh, during the crisis, we focus on the crisis, uh, whatever it was last time, SARS, <clears throat> bird flu, uh, co whatever virus it was, H1N1, all these kind of things. We focus on it. Then it goes away, and we're like, ah, crisis over, done. We don't keep the crisis management office. We don't keep those guys that are like, planning for the next crisis, war gaming for the crisis, the guys who would have had that plan yeah. to do that testing at the post office. That's a complicated plan, right? You got to get somebody with a little tent, somebody else with a little tent. You got to maybe get the postal. Somebody's got to draft some workers to do this. Uh, you have to set it up in every city in the country. That's a huge logistical Yeah, plan. but and, you don't want to give that job to a government, honestly. It's, well, I mean, again, we somebody, somebody has to sit around and think of these plans while we're not in crisis. And yeah, what I exactly. see on, on every single thing, company. we only solve the crisis. And this was frustrating. Like back in the day, I worked at a computer lab and that's like, I had a boss there and he's a good dude, but that's how he managed everything at the lab. Uh, if the network was down, that was the crisis. Let's fix that. If this thing was down, that was the crisis. Let's fix that. We never went back and fixed our infrastructure, fixed our structure, fixed the way we rolled out updates things like this that would make it so there were less crises or that we could fix the crisis next time. We always, thank you very much. We always fixed the current crisis. We never fixed any of the future. Cheers, oh, Josh has got the beer of death. Oh dude, that's beer what a death. poor brand. Those, those poor bastards. But, uh, Hey, they're getting more, I bet you more and more people buy this stuff just for this joke. <sighs> I can't imagine. I mean, whole nursing homes are going to be wiped out by that people. I still, I have this problem where we're already projecting to the future where millions of people had died from this and the entire generation's missing. And we're like, what happened to the baby boomers? Oh yeah. They survived all those wars and they survived all this shit to get killed by this fucking beer virus. And then everyone, will be, I don't know. I don't, it's not great. But, uh, well, they've, they've stopped any gathering more than a thousand people. So really, uh, if you have a meetup, you're going to tell Mike, to uh, go and get uh, nachos or something because um, we need to drop this meeting down to 999 and then it's okay. And that, it, folks, is how Mike survived 
the coronavirus. He was in getting tacos for everyone else. Well, and let's let's piss off the libertarians more. Uh, what's going to happen here? Well, already we're looking at Italy. They're having enforced quarantines, right? Just like in China, they're going to make you stay home. You're not going to like that. Uh, they're going to limit your rights. They're going to limit your ability to go places. We had this in China. They were, uh, you know, temperature monitoring people on the street. They were temperaturing monitoring. And these are heavily wrapped people that were out just to get supplies to go home. They weren't looking for things. Uh, so all that's coming. Meanwhile, in the U.S., uh, we just had an opening of a soccer game in Seattle and like people showed up like 30,000 people showed up in the middle of this crisis. Uh, we're not canceling anything. This whole like uh, uh, American independent value streak. I'm not going to say it's, it's a libertarian fault. I think it's an American independent value streak. Uh, that's strong here. We're still strong with it. And it, and it also has to do with that whole uh, unaffected consequences. No butterflies. I can do what I want. Uh, there was a guy recently where, uh, they had the coronavirus. They were supposed to stay in quarantine, but instead they went to like a school function. Like they took the kid to the play, and then the what? Secretary, yeah, really? They, yeah, and and this but is that, but that's just idiocy. That has nothing well, to do selfishness. with selfishness. I mean, I think it's a level of selfishness that we're not prepared for in our society, which is going to be. Yeah. When someone says quarantine I, I, you, and you say, "Oh, I ain't, I ain't doing no quarantine. I got this to do. I got that to do. I'm an important person. I'm going to do what I want." Yeah, you know, I'm married. Yeah, but that's just America. narcissism. That's just well, that, 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 that's something. Get that's ready for it because I I do think I mean yeah, Zaza Zaza is agreeing with me in the chat. He says the USA will get quarantined soon. Uh, he says we'll yeah. survive. I hope we'll survive. I've seen too many of these like um, you know planet killer attack from Mars movies. I mean the the monsters and stuff. If uh, if everybody decides that the emperor has no clothes, and if the emperor is making you stay in quarantine like an ET. And uh, you don't like it and your neighbors don't like it and everybody else's neighbors don't like it. And they all go in every direction. Um, obviously, that's going to break the E.T. quarantine. But in this virus situation, uh, every little pocket of these independent, independent, strong people uh, could now be infected with the virus, which then, you know, debilitates you. You need the help of society. Now you need ventilators. You need complex equipment. You need well-trained doctors who come from giant academies full of doctors. I mean, all of these like things that you've been rebelling against, you're instantly drawn back to. And, and that's where, and that's, I mean, I wanted to be independent. I, I hear you guys. I like the John Galt idea. I think it's a fun ideal. Like it's an imaginary thing. It's like being perfect. It's like, it's like a fantasy world that I want to live in. Uh, but the more you think about it, you're like, Oh, how am I going to be independent? I need, you know, money. I need healthcare. I need a doctor. I need uh, somebody who knows how to make things. I need somebody who can, you know, produce gasoline. I mean, I, there's a, all these different things drawing me back into society. So uh, I don't really see how you can yeah, be but, truly independent. In but you be. if you if you lived in the East, you also had that uh, in East Berlin. But, you know, when you needed a car, if you wanted a car, you had to order the car when your child was born because they were so fucking inefficient that it took that long, took 16 years to get the car to the person. <laughs> I was just so dumb at it. I agree, you need speciality. And, um, and I think a lot of, a lot of uh, libertarians agree with that. In fact, I think a lot of libertarians are, are the opposite. They'll be the ones that actually hock away and get prepared. They're the ones that prep a lot more than uh, a lot of other people who just have no philosophical, uh, philosophical standing. They just sort of freedom, love them, American. Uh, they don't really um, think much more than uh, painting everything in in red, white, and blue, and, uh, and 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 screaming their their best football team name out, and uh, and munching down on some KFC. All right, we want to give everyone another call to a uh, chance to call in. Otherwise, we might end the show. Uh, you can call us now at one five one eight six hundred. 1949 or on Skype at world crypto network. Uh, what do you think about what we've been saying? Do you think people uh, should worry about this now? Uh, is the virus going to reveal our secret interconnectedness? Is it going to change our society? I mean, uh, normally I think these are kind of pie in the sky ideas that we discuss here on the internet, but I got to say, this is exactly what they were talking about on CN on CNBC on the important financial news networks with the professionals. They were saying, wow, you know, we're going to do more telecommuting. Uh, certainly no one's ever going to shake hands anymore. That's out. Um, hugs and kisses. Hello. That's out. 
uh, you know, we're, we're changing the basis of our society. And this is only kind of uh, virus one, uh, the very first big major virus. And if you really want to get uh, conspiratorial about it, uh, this virus might have come out of a weapons biological factory. This could be a human-made virus, uh, which also yeah. this comes back to, uh, and you think of that, and they were talking about it on the conspiracy things, and I was, I was into it and not into it and all those things. But at the same time, when it really comes down to it, I think of like Oppenheimer, I think of the Manhattan Project, and I think of who would do that? Who would work on a, a drug that is a, a weapon, you know, is a virus that could just, what's it good for? Well, it, it kills a lot of people. You know, what else is it good for? Well, it creates nuclear power. No, it's, it's more just like a virus that kills a lot of people. I mean, I guess it's good we learn a lot about viruses. Maybe we could take, you know, the, the, squint, the hinge door no, off I, of this virus and attach it to that one and make a good virus. And uh, there's, you know, there's different things in there. But uh, at the very, co and I know, yeah, if you didn't do it, somebody else would do it. But there's got to be some line where we're just like, no, I'll I, tell you, I won't do that. I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take that. I'll go down conspiracy road with you. All right. So, go ahead. so it kills a lot of people, but if we look at the graph of who, who it kills, it kills people that uh, have an underlying condition, but mainly old people. Now, China had a one child policy for a very, very long time. And uh, this, uh, the, the, the retirement scheme, they, they start, the Chinese start earning retirement money from the age of 60. Now, retirement schemes are Ponzi schemes in every letter of the word. You need more young coming in than old going out. Otherwise, the scheme collapses because you need to pay for the old with new money. Uh, this is a, a classic Ponzi scheme. Now, the old were getting older. The, uh, the Chinese were not having children. The one-child policy made sure of that. On top of the one-child policy, you have constant streams of internet. So the youth in America everywhere, globally, aren't having sex anymore because they're getting massive amounts of dopamine hits from pornography and from scrolling constant uh, uh, stuff on, on uh, Instagram and, and the Chinese equivalents. And so people aren't having new babies. And basically, this Ponzi scheme will collapse unless you remove the old. There, ladies and gentlemen, is the conspiracy theory. There it is. And I, it's really when it started off and it started sweeping through China and they talked about how it was golden going after the elderly. Uh, and, and it's horrifying. But at the same time, you're like, well, you know, that doesn't affect production. Ha, 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 ha. Right? I mean, there's... there's, there's for every good person, there you know, there's a bad person, right? I mean, for every really good person, there's a really bad person. And if you're a really bad person and you're out there and you're paying for the creation of these viruses, which, again, you want to weaponize them. I mean, if we're really talking about what is bio-warfare, I want to make a virus that kills my enemy, right? So I either need a virus that's choosy, a virus that goes after enemies because my enemies might have certain characteristics, uh, a virus that's choosy in the age. Maybe my enemies are old. Uh, maybe my enemies are in a certain location or a virus that kills and then dies. Off. I mean, there's all creating a bioweapon is not a great thing. Uh, but if we go down the thought experiment of why you do it, how you do it, so on and so forth, um, that's where we come to. And uh, in a democracy, in a civilized society, we'd be able to see how much money they were spending on these programs and we could to then have a vote if we want to do them, if we want to cancel them, but we kind of hide them and we don't talk about them. So they're out there. And then we say things like, well, the other side has them. So therefore we must have them. And if the other side has them, they, we must spend twice as much or four times as much or whatever kind of multiplier you want to put on there. Um, so, and no one's talking about this yet in the media. Uh, but at a certain point we're talking about viruses. We're talking about virology. I'm talking about, funding the CDC, having people that are actually there during the non-crisis to protect on how to handle these. And the other people who are working during the non-crisis are these bioweapons people. And we have to decide as a society, uh, are these good people? Are they bad people? Are they criminals? Do we want more of this, less of this? Does cracking down on it even make there be less? I think it would, it would help a little, but it still would be underground. The whole uh, black market argument certainly applies. Uh, but yeah, we have to we have to look at this. Looking at the chat, 
uh, the chat, the chat's being very cool. Nobody's putting out their conspiracy cards. Uh, good job on everybody. Uh, but yeah, Rad Vladdy says, uh, qui bono, who benefits? And the virus certainly has benefits for some people. And uh, nobody wants it to be this way. And it took us two hours to get here. Um, but no, it's out there, right? It's a possibility. It's something that we have to weigh and that we have to look yeah. at. Because we know it came from Wuhan. We know there's a biological weapons lab in Wuhan. The current link officially that we're being told, uh, the official story, as far as I understand it, and again, we might never know, we might just not know from a scientific perspective, uh, is that uh, bat parts from tests at the Wuhan lab were allegedly sold on the meat market, the wet market, where all the crazy meats are sold, uh, some kind of thing there. That's what they're telling us. So, But that's still a link to a lab. Uh, the, the underground conspiracy th people, I was watching them this morning, and I, that's even that's a rude thing to call him. He's not a conspiracy, but whatever. Those people, the other people, uh, they basically said that it was from that lab, but it might have been stolen from a lab in Winnipeg, Canada, and that the Winnipeg lab is uh, U.S., Canada, U.K., and uh, all these things. It's just if we're in a democracy, let's have some hearings. <laughs> you know, in the U.K., in the Canada, in the U.S., any of those three countries. Let's have some hearings. Let's decide if we want to have these bioweapons or not, uh, how secret we have to be about them. I mean, let's just, you know, even if it's not true, let's have some hearings. Uh, but uh, yeah. So. And stop eating crazy meats. I mean, we left, we left hunter gathering years ago, years and years and years ago to go towards farming, you know, stop with the bats. Stop with the with the snakes and the and the strange uh, you know ant eaters and and whatnot. Yeah, but if the if the it's if just the cruel evil... and it's disgusting and it's uh, foul. These these wild animals belong in the wild and they they deserve to be free. But if an evil government laboratory is giving the extra meat to the meat market, it's not really the creepy meat market's fault. Uh, I it's it's difficult to like not like the meat market is bad in its own way but it might not be the cause. So I, we just need to be, and that's again, all these things, they want you to go in this direction. They want you to go in that direction. They're directing you. They're controlling this guy and that guy, and they want you this and that, uh, you know, there's always these distractions. And I, I do think at the core, yeah, we need to think about diseases more, think about viruses more, think about bioweapons more. Uh, Rad Vladdy saying that as a libertarian, he would voluntarily give uh, to a social organization like the CDC uh, if there was a private one. Uh, so that's a nice idea. And, and I'm, I'm open enough to that. I think part of, if we really think about Bitcoin and we want to go back to our topic and uh, go back to our ideas here, uh, if Bitcoin succeeds, uh, let's, let's fiat Bitcoin success. Uh, it is done. Uh, we would need things like a voluntary CDC. It would have to have all kinds of things that we don't have right now. Like you'd have to publish all the board meetings. Uh, but on the other side yeah. of that, you need a citizen-funded organization, probably a DAO, uh, that is funded where people go in and review these board meetings because it's not enough just mm -hmm. to publish them. You need that other side of review. Uh, so as an industry, as a Bitcoin industry, if we want to be prepared for that eventual day of Bitcoin taking over, we need to not only have the organization that would build this voluntary CDC, but also the organization that would audit the voluntary CDC and they'd have to be interlocking in some way. The audit would have to have some effect because I can audit general motors all I want. And they can ignore my audit. Uh, if the general motors board was designed to work with the audit and they were interlocking, you know, and these are layers upon layers of structure and logistics that would have to be designed and planned uh, for us to be ready for this. Uh, but that is what we're going to need. If Bitcoin does succeed a hundred percent, and in the same way we have the voluntary CDC, we'd need a voluntary a military. <laughs> we'd need a voluntary conflict resolution yeah. department. I don't know what it's going to be called, but, uh, you know. Con yeah, content resolution. I, uh, sorry, not content resolution. <laughs> conflict. Conflict resolution companies would be great. Um, folks, give us a call. This is your last, very last chance. If you uh, agree with us or disagree with us, it's easy. You dial a phone number and, uh, and you're on with us. Or you jump on Skype, good old Skype. Who you, who, actually, who uses that anymore? I don't know. Microsoft. Everyone loves Microsoft. 
You know, the only product that Microsoft makes that doesn't suck, Thomas? Uh, the mice and keyboards. No, the Microsoft vacuum cleaner. But a bunch. That was a way yeah. homer. That was a Dyson of a joke. But uh, <laughs> no, I think we had, a, we had a good time chatting here. Uh, looks like the yep. stock market is continuing uh, the downtrend. We had a bit of that uptrend. Now we are down 6.59% and continuing uh, down to 24,161, just barely holding on to the 24,000 level. I uh, remember everyone thinks in these big round numbers. So for absolutely no reason at all, if we break 24,000, we'll probably go to 23.5 or something like that, just based on the number alone. I'm not saying there's any yeah. reason for this. Uh, but uh, so people are watching that. Bitcoin price looks like it's continued downward as well, uh, down 3.6% with a last of 7,767. Uh, so keep an eye on the stock market thing. It's about to go through the seven where we had the circuit breaker. I don't know that it's going to hit the full 13 to get the second circuit breaker or the 20 to get the full close. So it looks like we'll see. We'll see. But damage may be guys, up or down. Keep an eye on the stock market because, you know, as the old quote goes, and I think it was like Rothschild or one of these nasty people uh, said, uh, buy when there's blood in the streets and there's definitely blood in the streets. So keep an eye out on, uh, on that flow of red and, uh, and maybe you can pick up some good companies and, you know, look out for technicals here. Which companies have solid balance sheets? Which companies aren't affected by supply chains? Which companies have not got uh, uh, any problems with factories that are uh, that factory workers cannot go back to uh, because of uh, the coronavirus? Look at uh, solid amounts of revenue that they have, uh, savings, uh, things like this. Uh, there, there, there are companies out there, and uh, if you find them, let me know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not the cruise ship companies maybe costco i uh, just wanted to show the yeah. fundraiser one more time and thank our 32 donors uh, for donating to our fundraiser you can donate now with bitcoin or lightning network uh, with the qr code on your screen we're trying to raise one million dollars uh, which is now up to 128 bitcoins uh, previously it was only around 114 uh, so <laughs> pretty fun stuff uh, but thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Until next time, bye-bye.